Hello, and thank you for watching. My name is Rachel Barnett with Gentle Frog. I'm here to create videos for you to help you understand QuickBooks slightly better than you currently do. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please put them in the chat box. Thank you. Hi, this is Rachel Barnett from Gentle Frog. In this video, I want to talk to you about your chart of accounts. So first of all, there's a couple ways you can get to your chart of accounts. You can click on the gear in the upper right hand corner of your screen. Under your company, you can go down a chart of accounts. An alternative way to get there is to go to the left hand side of your screen, select accounting, and then chart of accounts. When you open your chart of accounts, you have a handful of columns. The first column is the name column. The name column is the name that you're going to see when working with your chart of accounts or any of your accounts. So for example, if we go new and make a bank deposit, the account name is the name you see up here in the upper left hand corner where it says account. It's also going to be what you see down below when you see account and you look at the drop down. A different way you might see the name column is going to be in the banking screen. So you know when you go to banking and you start working with this stuff and it says, what's the category? The category is the name column. It's the account on the chart of accounts. Let's go back to my chart of accounts. The second column is the type column. And the type column tells QuickBooks, what kind of account is this? And more specifically, it tells QuickBooks, now that I know what type of account it is, I know QuickBooks. <laughs> I know whether I'm going to put that, um, that information on the balance sheet or the profit and loss, and I know where I'm going to put it. Moving over to the right is the detail type. The detail type for the most part just doesn't matter. So when you're watching my videos and looking at anything I've done, you're going to see, I'm just going to pick the first thing on the list. I'm not going to go through the effort to pick something that looks pretty. The QuickBooks balance on the right hand side. That's the balance in your QuickBooks register. So the register is whatever you've been adding to your QuickBooks account. The only accounts with a register or a balance are your balance sheet accounts. You're not going to have a register balance for your income or your expenses, but you will for your bank account. The logic behind this is that your bank account has a dollar amount and that dollar amount isn't a representation of just today. It's a representation of everything since the beginning of time. Over to the right, you have bank balance. The only time QuickBooks knows what your bank balance is, is if you've connected your bank to QuickBooks or you've uploaded a file into your QuickBooks into the banking screen. So when I say the banking screen, I mean the screen over here. If you've linked an account, QuickBooks will know your bank balance. If you click the drop down and you select it upload from file, QuickBooks will know your bank balance as of the date of the file. To the right of bank balance, you have your actions. You're going to have the action of view register for any of your balance sheet accounts because they have a register. If you wanted to see a more simplified report, you could click the drop down on the far right hand side and then say run report. When you run a report, you select your start and end date, whereas a register is just a register or a log. When you look at this, you can see that it's sorted by type. I know it's sorted by type because there's a little arrow next to type. It's sorted by balance sheet followed by profit and loss. When I look at my balance sheet, my assets are on the top of my balance sheet. This is standard in accounting land. It's not something specific to QuickBooks. So I have my bank accounts, which are asset accounts. I have more asset accounts. Then I scoot down into my liabilities, my credit cards, my loans. I round it out with my equity accounts. And then after I get past retained earnings, I start moving into my income accounts. So there's just an imaginary divider line here where you stop seeing balance sheet accounts and you start seeing profit and loss accounts. When you flip over to your profit and loss accounts, you're going to see there's no longer a register. There's now just run report. It's going to start with my income, move on to my cost of goods sold, and then my expenses just like it is on my profit and loss, also known as my income statement. If you don't like that, if it's confusing, just click on name. Sort the whole thing in alphabetical order. Totally fine. If you're looking for something specific, you can search for it in the filter. If you wanted to change something or make batch actions, you can do that over here. 
the batch action available to you is to make accounts inactive. If you're no longer using an account, you can make it inactive or turn it off. If you're looking at the names of your accounts and you realize you want to change something about the names, you can do that one at a time by clicking the drop down on the right and selecting edit. You can then change where it says account name. That's totally fine, totally fantastic and very doable. An alternative way is to click on the pencil, then it's going to make it so that you can edit all of your account names. You can edit the names to be whatever you'd prefer them to be, and then you can save on the right hand side. If you want to export your chart of accounts, you can do that by selecting run report at the top of your screen. It's going to run you this report. Then you can click on the paper with an arrow flying out of it and select export to Excel or PDF or whatever you'd prefer. Let me go back. If you wanted to add to your chart of accounts, you can click on the green new in the upper right hand corner and you can add an account to your chart of accounts. I have a more detailed video explaining how to add an account to your chart of accounts, so I won't do that here. I hope this video has been helpful. If my team or I can do anything to help you, please don't hesitate to let us know. We offer bookkeeping, QuickBooks training, and the occasional bad joke. Thank you so much and have a great day.